one of the most complex presentations of bilateral phacodonesis, advanced cataract, medically not responding, severe glaucoma with extensive loss of ganglion cells as indicated by very narrow rim, optic disc rim, is posted for surgery. I've done a 2.8 millimeter sclerolimbal corneal tunnel. You can see the uh, tumulousness of the lens. Most of the zonules are gone. The lens is moving extensively all around as I'm doing the rexis. Tunnel floor entry keeps the viscoelastic in the anterior chamber and helps me in doing most of the rexis. The tunnel is enlarged. The internal lip is made larger with the 2.8 knife. I'm continuing the rexis, keeping the lens in the center. Tropical anesthesia now supplemented with a little bit of 1% lignocaine in front of the iris and very gently behind the iris. The nucleus is rotated. Surprisingly, it's not a very large nucleus as I had predicted, but it's extremely hard. It will not come out through the tunnel that I've created because of its thickness and hardness. It's not malleable, so I try to bisect the nucleus with my routine technique of bisecting with the shaft of a 25 gauge cannula. It's not cutting through, so I'm using a cystitome to complete the bisection and ensuring that the two halves are totally separated. I'm removing the heminuclei one after another. I'm impaling the cystitome into the nucleus so that it helps me in visco expressing it. The other half is also expressed similarly. Cortical aspiration is done. Initially, the cortex in the anterior chamber is evacuated to protect the endothelium. The uh, infusion is controlled by a silicon bulb. The amount of fluid that goes inside the eye is very minutely controlled by my right hand and aspiration is done with my left hand. So very intricate irrigation aspiration can be done to maintain the chamber depth and to avoid the loss of chamber. Zonules are very fragile, capsular back can come out at any point of time. So I'm extra careful and re-injecting the visco into the anterior chamber repeatedly and keeping the AC deep. The pressure inside the eye, there is an upthrust, as you can see there. The pressure inside the eye is little on higher side. So there can be a capsular bag loss at any point of time. But luckily it did not happen. I kept on injecting visco, deepening it. And the only visco that I needed was HPMC in this case. The subincisional cortex is aspirated using the J-shaped uh, or U-shaped cannulas. As you can see, its uh, capsular bag is holding the uh, little bit of cortex there because the capsular separating hydrodissection is is not complete in that area, otherwise it would have come out easily. Note that it is a low pressure, low vacuum, and low flow technique, and uh, the entire surgery is being done under atmospheric pressure. There is a positive pressure in the vitreous cavity. I'm trying to uh, circumvent that by repeated injection of HPMC into the eye. Though the capsular bag is intact, I wanted to put a uh, Iris fixation, retroiris fixation I will in this patient because 
It's a progressive disease, bilateral degenerative condition of the zonules and capsular back. Even if I succeed in putting a endocapsular ring as well as uh, a lens inside this capsular bag, it's likely to get dislocated in the due course of time. It's not a, it's a middle-aged lady. So uh, the uh, iris claw lens is placed inside. The capsule is intact with uh, extensive zonular dehiscence. During surgery, I have ensured that zonular dehiscence, which was pre-existing, it did not worsen as I've I have prolapsed the nucleus out of capsular bag in the very initial stage of the surgery. There is an upthrust continuously. I had to keep on replenishing with viscoelastic. As you can see, the upthrust pushes the IOL out. I could manage to uh, enclavate the one, ha one haptic. The haptic, uh, now as the moment I put it, the lens is going to come out, so I position the cannula. It is a special cannula, 27 gauge cannula, short one, uh, uh, before I uh, open the antechamber, holding the lens. Everything is okay. Now I am doing an aridectomy with a 23 gauge uh, hypodermic needle. That hole was enlarged with the cannula, confirming that it's through and through. Viscoelastic is completely uh, removed from the eye, and that's the end of surgery. There's no need to bandage the eye. I can start using eye drops, which includes homotropin eye drops and frequent steroid drops immediately postoperative. The patient has done extremely well postoperatively, and uh, we need to monitor the pressures uh, during the postoperative follow up. This novel surgery appears to be safe, simple, least invasive and does not involve operating on the sclera, ciliary body, vitreous base, and vitreous, and has given excellent results. Thank you.